I can describe how war can help in the economy. I can defend and criticize the U.S. government's reluctance to join World War One. Hey, we're talking about World War One today. And I can list key points in President Wilson's 14-point plan. So know a couple of the things that are a part of his plan. As always, we're basing this on the AP curriculum. And then we're going to draw a lot from Zen today and Thomas Wood. So we're definitely going to get pretty much red-pilled and get a little dirty. Quick background knowledge. I'm not going to go into the world history information that you should have already known from seventh grade or ninth grade. That's going to explain the causes of World War I. But here are your uh, allied powers and here are your central powers. Germany, Austria-Hungary versus France, Great Britain, Russia. You know, you can name the rest. That's kind of the big dog they're going to play with. So the, the main cause for the war is imperialism. Countries are developing rivalries because they're trying to conquer the world. And then conquering the world, you open up new markets and you're able to get more raw materials. It's going to increase your a home economy makes a lot of money. So it's really just this fight to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually it's going to boil over and lead to a rivalry here in, uh, uh, on Europe, in Europe, nationalism. So we're also developing a lot of national pride between the nations and people take uh, offense to anyone talking poorly of the nation, blah, blah, blah. Militarism. We've had a long time since the wars happened. There's a lot of technological advances. People are uh, giddy to show off their weapons. It's crazy to say, but they have all these new killing machines and they can't wait to use them. And then secret alliances is really one of the big things. All these countries had secret alliances between each other. So once one country went to war, then another country had to jump into war to get that country's back. And then another country took that country's back. And then another guy jumped in. And so everybody had to defend everybody. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, all of Europe is in a war. So we'll start out here in Eastern Europe in the Balkans region and Austro-Hungarian Empire. Austria-Hungary is kind of pushing their empire into the east and they're trying to take over Serbia. And they are in Sarajevo where the Archduke Franz Ferdinand gets shot and killed. The Austro-Hungarian Empire is Franz Ferdinand. He is killed. So Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Okay, no big deal. But Serbia had a secret alliance with Russia. So Russia declares war on Austria-Hungary. Well, Germany had a secret alliance with Austria-Hungary, and so when Russia declares war on Austria-Hungary, Germany jumps in. And well, when Germany, so then France and England, everybody all of a sudden, next thing you know, because one guy gets killed, the world is involved in a war. Crazy. W.E.B. Du Bois, it's a war, he says, to see who gets to conquer Africa and steal its natural resources. It's imperialism. White nations get richer stealing from darker nations. There's always that tinge of racism that's in the background of every single one of these lessons, and you can't really say he's wrong on this one. Sure, it may not be the total reason, but it's definitely a part of it. All right, let's start the war. World War I, Allied powers versus Axis powers. If you want to buy weapons, you need money. And so at this time, the European nations say, hey, America, we loaned you a bunch of money. It's time for you to pay us back. Cool, no problem. Well, there's a catch. Can't pay us back in cash. You need to pay us back in gold and silver. We don't want a fiat currency. We don't want the paper money because we know about inflation and all that nonsense. Gold and silver, we want the real deal. Fine, we do it. Here's the problem. In the 19-teens and for most of America's history, when we made dollar bills, dollar bills were a representation of gold. Every dollar printed was backed up by gold. We could not print extra. We could not print less. Every dollar matched up with gold. We're no longer like that today. That's a lesson for another day. But back then, everything was backed up. So if we have less gold in our vaults, then that means we have less paper dollars in the economy. And if there's less paper dollars, people spend less money. And if people spend less money, we make less goods. And if the factories are making less goods, then they need less workers. And then less workers means less people buying stuff. And if less people buy stuff, they make less stuff. And it just goes down, 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 all the way down to the bottom. And it's bad news for everybody. And the economy crashes because all of our gold went over, and when the gold goes, the dollars go. No, 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 okay, you understand how it goes. So we go into a recession. Oh, no, no. And this was a terrible choice for Jeff because this is probably completely taking you out of the lesson. And now you're thinking Family Guy, and you're not thinking about World War I. That's a mistake. Also, probably going to get hit with a copyright strike. So, but we'll change that. Please don't hit me, YouTube. But guess what? We'll fix it. Let's go to the oh yeah Kool-Aid part because that recession will be very short and very quick because war stimulates the economy. Yay, war! I wish I was joking, but it does stimulate the economy because Europe needs guns and we can sell those guns to Europe. That means money in our economy. And the more guns they buy, the more factories we build, the more workers are working to make those death 
machines and those death machines sell for good money and it means more money in america and then guess what we said in the last slide when people have money they tend to spend more and they spend more then we're going to make more goods and then we're going to hire more workers and we're going to spend more money yay war it's sad but it's true it doesn't help everyone in the economy and it surely doesn't help the people that are fighting war but it helps some companies and some corporations do really well when there's wars and they get really really rich when there's wars and so there's kind of an incentive for us to fight wars forever because i gotta get rich oh yeah that's why we're fighting those wars yeah pretty much now one of the interesting things is that we tend to sell most of these guns and goods to great britain scratch your head and say well why are we giving all those stuff to the allied powers why not the central powers not give them to both we're not getting involved why not sell to both why only sell to one side we're supposed to be neutral and the claim is in america that we are neutral we're not picking a side because when you pick a side just like in real life if you see two people fighting and you pick one of the sides you tend to get draw dragged into it and then you have to defend that person all of a sudden now you're in the argument whereas it would have been much easier had you not picked the side and you just stay out of it and that that's officially america's policy during the world war one we're not going to pick a side although in reality it looks like we have picked a side because we're tending to sell most of our goods to england but we claim to be neutral and there's another policy uh, a thing that you can do is lend money to the nations that are at war if England is at war, they need money to buy guns and they may not have that money right now. So they're going to borrow that money and the banks can lend them the money and the banks will get the money back plus interest. The banks can get really rich from war. Let me say that again. Banks get really rich during war. Wars must be financed. Every war costs money. The people that are loaning the money get rich every time we fight a war. Banks get rich off war. It seems like banks would want us to be at war a lot. Hmm. Hey, we tend to be at war a lot. Maybe it's the banks. Anyway, the government says, no, you can't do this. You have to remain neutral. Our official policy is neutral. We're not picking allies. We're not picking the central powers. We're staying out of this because if we loan to one, then we're going to get dragged to that side and they're going to end up pulled into this war. So the best way to stay out of the war is not pick a side. We have a policy of neutrality until we don't. And you say, yeah, whatever. There's too much money to be made. Let's pick a side. Let's give some money. Let's get in there and do this thing. So even though we're supposed to be neutral, there is this general feeling that eh, we're kind of on the side of England. We love you, England. And one of the arguments is that, hey, we have a common ancestry with uh, England. And they're also one of our biggest trading partners. If you look at Germany as opposed to England, we trade twice as much with England. So we probably should side with them. And now I say we, there's no we. There's no we. The American people are not looking at it. Well, you know, we tend to trade more with England or, well, you know, we have a common ancestry. No, the we is the government, the leaders, the elite, the corporations. That's the we. And those people feel a common ancestry. Those powerful people say, hey, we trade mainly with them. Let's side with them. It's not the American people because the American people don't want to fight a war. They don't want to pick a side. They want to stay out of it. Wilson is pro-British. We tend to work mainly with the British. Now, you kind of got to convince the people to go along with it. So you got to find a reason to create a we. And you've got to make the people either really love the English or you go, the next best thing is, hey, let's just make people hate Germans. We can't really convince them of this common ancestry and trading partner thing. But what we can do is just make the Germans look bad. And so they make up a story that when the, the Germans invade France or line up to fight the war, as they pass through neutral, neutral Belgium, Belgium doesn't pick a side. They're just there. And they just just happened to be in the middle of these two places geographically like I don't, we don't mind just go on through germany or go on through france we don't want any of this well the story is apparently as germany goes through there's this atrocity and the germans are murdering children and killing people on the streets and there's evil evil german people and the americans are like oh no it's terrible we can't believe you did this and we can't believe you did this because it never happened it didn't happen there's no evidence whatsoever clarence darrow famous lawyer that we'll eventually talk about, uh, but maybe his first time here in, in, on the public scene says, hey, I don't believe it. 
I will give, and he gives thousands of dollars to anyone that can provide any proof or evidence that this happened. The government is acting like this happened. He says, no, 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 it's propaganda. Now this isn't like 20 years, 30 years after the fact, like we often look back and say, oh, how stupid were we? This is during the time that it happens. Clarence Darrow says, uh -uh, I don't buy this nonsense from the government. Someone give me proof, someone give me evidence. I will pay you if you can provide some proof that this really happened. They don't. No one ever even tries to convince. You know, we always said the government doesn't even try to convince. They don't even try to prove. They said, nope, it happened. They're terrible. You need to believe us. And the people do. And we make Germany the villain here. And we love England. So we think Germany is a bad guy based on a story where there's no proof, no facts. And we choose to love England, even though we have proof that England's not being good either. We have proof. We have facts. We know for sure that England is not being good, but we choose to believe the lie. We know that England is blockading Germany and starving the German people. And I'm not saying the German soldiers. I'm saying the German people, the babies. The women, the children are being denied food because of this blockade that's preventing fruit from getting into the country. We know England's doing that, but we still hurt England. And we know that England is putting landmines also to prevent goods from getting into, not landmines, ocean mines, water mines, blowing ships up to prevent them. We know they're not being good guys either, but we still heart them because of our common ancestry, not our common ancestry, the elite's common ancestry because of their trading connections. So let's go into the Lusitania. We might be able to fit this in here. I don't know if I spelled that right. I don't care if I spelled that right. So we're selling goods to the European powers. We're technically neutral. So we're technically selling things to everyone, but we're not really. We're not really selling to everybody. What's happening is we're selling to the allied powers. We're selling to England. We're selling to France. We're supposedly trying to sell to Germany, but every time we try to go to Germany, we run in this blockade like, oh darn, I guess we just won't be able to get these guns to Germany. I guess we'll just sell them to England. Oh, I guess we can't sell this food to Germany. I guess we'll just give it to England. Oh, oh well. See how that's kind of working out perfectly for Germany and the people that have a common ancestry, or not for Germany, for England and for France and for the people with this common ancestry. At a certain point, Germany's tired of it. They know the game. They know what's going on. They know we're not neutral. They know we're picking sides. They know we're helping England out. And the more we help England and France out, the less likely Germany is going to win this war. So what they start doing is they, un they use the submarines, they use the U-boats, and they start blowing up our ships because... We're not innocent. We're not neutral. Oh, well, we're just sending over innocent, blah, blah, blah. No, you're sending guns to England. Germany can't have that. If, Ger if England gets more guns, then they're going to use those guns on Germany. So it makes sense, and it's totally right, for Germany to attack ships carrying guns that are going to be used to kill Germans. Now, what happens is the ship called the Lusitania gets blown up. Well, the Lusitania had 1,500 passengers on it. Innocent people blown up and killed by a German U-boat. Well, guess what? That innocent ship was carrying munitions. It was stockpiled of guns and weapons and ammo, just like every other ship that's traveling in there. We are sending tons of guns and weapons, and we're often sticking these weapons secretly underneath with innocent civilians so we can say hey don't blow this one up this one's got innocent civilians on did you hide the guns underneath cool they're gonna let us buy awesome hope they don't check the trunk that's what we were doing that's the game germany knew what was up so germany started blowing up the ships well america again oh i can't believe it they're blowing up our ships those evil germans we we buy it again and so the elites are tricking the people to get behind the war even though a lot of the people don't want to fight the war but they are at least creating a justification so that when the elites and when the ruling class decide to go to war, even if the people don't want the war, they can say, no, 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 here's what they did. They were blowing up our ships. What are we supposed to do? I don't know. But, but got to give a little bit of credit here. Wilson is still trying to stay out of the war. How about some red pill action here? Just like we knew for the most part that the Belgian story was fake, just like we knew that when we went to Iraq in the 90s, that it was a fake story. They weren't killing babies. Just like we knew that when Syria didn't really gas the people, the people knew not to get on the boat. The Germans took out ads. They paid money to put ads in American newspapers warning people, don't get on the boat. We're going to blow up the boat. Don't get on it. They warned us and still 
people, ah, eh, give it a shot. You know what? They'll let us buy it. It's an innocent boat. They're going to let us through. I'll take my chances. They tried to warn you. They tried to warn you. It's a big, strong boat. And they thought, they honestly thought that it would last. But the boat was filled with weapons and ammo. If it gets hit by a torpedo, it's going to explode. It doesn't matter how big and strong the boat is. And it didn't. And the Germans actually refused to even shoot a second missile because they're like, no, 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 they don't got a chance. They don't have a chance whatsoever. And they didn't have a chance. And they died. A lot of them died. You can blame, I mean, in this story, as we wrap up, and we'll talk about the second one. Obviously, the American government's evil because we put a bunch of weapons on the boat. Obviously, the American people are stupid because they're warned not to get on the boat. You really can't blame the Germans. They're taking out the boat. They told us they were going to take out the boat. What are they supposed to do?